Celtics were celebrating their, I want to say, 40th anniversary of marriage. I was 50 then. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I always wanted to go to Disney, and I knew our family was too poor. And so I invited them to Disney, and then I decided, what the heck, let's make this a wonderful parish trip. I was a pastor in Blacksburg at the time, and about 32 families decided, we'll go with you to Disney. I drove, they took a bus. And uh, at one point, I, I just wanted to give the family, the, the parents, a break. <laughs> it was the worst decision in my entire life. I said, I'll take care of the kids. I'm an only child. I've been in a monastery. I've been in formation as a priesthood. I don't know anything about kids. And so all the kids stayed with me. The parents thanked me. And it was absolute bedlam. I didn't even know where to begin. And there was a 13-year-old uh, girl that came up to me and said, I babysit. Can I help you? <laughs> and I thank God for her. And so what I'm going to do is ask our young people who are doing the First Communion to come with me. We're going to go in the commons. And I guess that whole introduction was, if parents want to come with me to help me and save me, that would be very, very much appreciated. You don't all have to come. And one of the things that I wanted to try to do with this, we're going to have a walk through the church at some point. Uh, so everything, Stations of the Cross, the altar, the uh, stained glass windows will all be uh, uh, explained. Uh, but there's some things, I'm, I'm what they call a very visual person, and we have some very, very important furniture, and that's a bad word for it. It's holy furniture within the church that to me, every time I pass it, uh, it, it just raises my heart up to God. So I'm going to talk about that, talk about the aisle, talk about where you're seated here as well. So if I can have the young people who are doing the first uh, Eucharist, just stand. All right, I'm going to ask you to go in the commons with me and with about 100 parents. Just follow me. All right, you guys can gather all the way around me. All right, just come forward. Come forward. Come all the way over here. Do you know who you guys are? No. You guys are the people of God. Can you say that? We are the people of God. We are the people of God. As soon as you wake up on a Sunday morning, you are a person of God who are coming here to just uh, give worship to God the Father and meet the members of your faith community. That is so important. So especially when you come through those doors, you identify yourselves as the people of God, and you're here to worship. So I'm going to ask you to follow me right through those doors. And just gather around the baptismal font. I understand that you guys are doing your first communion, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's the first what's the first sacrament that you need before you can do first Eucharist? Anybody, just shout it out. Baptism. Baptism. So you'll notice that a lot of people when they come to the Eucharist or come to Mass, they'll put their fingers within the baptismal font and do the sign of the cross. And so it's a beautiful thing. That's our covenant with God. And so that's a reminder that uh, I've made a covenant with God, and now it's time for me to be able to take my place at the table of the Lord. So I'm going to ask you guys to simply, and whenever you come to church and come to the Eucharist, do that. Just put your fingers in and do the sign of the cross. Go ahead if you can. And then we're going to go up the center aisle.
Now, who are you guys? The followers of God. You are the people of God, right? Yeah. Where do the people of God sit? The saints. Right here, right? That is so important. This is your community. This is where the people of God sit. This is where they're going to they're be together, and they are going to worship God, and they're going to be with one another, all right? And one of the things, do you remember Moses? What did he do? You remember the stained glass window there about Moses, huh? -huh? What did he climb? He climbed the mountain. He climbed the mountain. And that's what I do. I dress like this. I represent all of you, and I also represent God. And so when I go up those steps, I climb the mountain, right? Wait, so the steps on the mountain? Yep, let's follow me up the mountain. And if you can gather right around here. All right, on this side if you want. Thank you for your help. All right. All right. When, when you get up here, when you look at that cross over there, what do you see? All right, it's his body, right? And if you look, kind of there's a, a gash in his side. There's blood and water that comes out of that. And when we have bread and wine on the table, what is that going to become? Um, his, um, his, his bread of the body and the wine of the blood. Right, it's his body and blood. And so for me, this whole altar is the cross. Okay, because his body and blood are there, and it's really, really important. Uh-huh. It is. It's an act of God. Right? Because remember, I just go over this and I say, let your spirit come upon these gifts. So I'm asking the spirit of God to make this kind of a miracle. And if you look at this, this is one of my favorite things. Heaven and earth are going to come together on this table. Because wherever Jesus travels, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit come with him. All the saints, and, and you know, this year I lost my dad, right? He's, he's deceased. And we pray for those who have died. And I know that my mom and my dad are here because they're, they're coming with Jesus. My uh, has really? Yeah. yeah. So wow. We'll like, pray for him. So this is like a ritual? Uh, this is a ritual. And, um, and so whenever I'm up here and I look at all the whiteness and stuff, it all re always reminds me of heaven. Gold and, and lights. We use lights to remind us that God is present here. Okay? All right. Uh huh. Yes. And when we got that cross, somebody told me that the crown of thorns actually came outside of Jerusalem, where they think the actual uh, crown of thorns came. So, so I think that's awesome. I actually see his blood. Yep. You got it. Where do you think? Anybody know where Jesus' body oh, is? No. no. No, that's a statue. He's in heaven. He's in heaven, right? What's, what's Easter all about? Jesus rose from the dead, right? It's in heaven. Do you remember? Remember, that's an important question. When you, when you read the scriptures, it tells us that Jesus asked where he rose. He went to visit his disciples. The, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, the disciples that were locked in the upper room, he was able to go through locked doors. And so that's just saying that Jesus' body was freed from our limitations. Um, and, and so he's up in the kingdom of heaven, and that's why he can be with us uh, constantly. But so this is all important. Um, and over here, that is where the, uh, the word is done. And I asked the people that designed that to make it look a little bit like a table. So you have the table of the Word and the table of the Eucharist. Okay? I'm going to ask you to get down there right on the rug. Uh-huh. Um, he put stars in, in the sky to make sure he was dead. Yep. That's not a question. That's good. No, I have a question. Uh-huh. Um, that's, they put a sign on top that said, um, 
Jesus the King of the Jews? All right, why don't you guys just sit down for a minute? All right, very, very quickly, because I don't want to keep you here all night. Uh, when I come in, and again, I represent the people, and I represent Jesus, and I come up the mountain here, uh, you, you'll see a cross come up, and the cross is reminding us who brought us here is the person of Jesus. And so once I'm here, I turn to the entire assembly. Anybody remember the first thing that I do? Invite everyone to do the sign of the cross, right? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that simply means that we gather here in the name of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, that's who we have come to really celebrate. And one of the first things that we do um, in the liturgy is, and we do a lot of singing and stuff at the beginning, but I ask you to remember your sins. And if there's anything that you have done wrong, if you were ugly to a brother or a sister or mom and dad, a teacher or a friend, um, that, that's all a division. That, that it's putting people away from us. Uh-huh. So it's putting people away from us, and we, we don't put people away from us when we gather here in the Trinity. And so I'll ask you, remember your sins. So when you come here at the beginning of every single Mass, if there's something that is weighing on your heart, if you feel bad about a relationship with someone, you bring it here and you ask the Spirit of God to forgive you. And as a priest, I can't forgive sins, but I've been given the gift of the Spirit of God and I will forgive those sins. And so you remember right now you are the people of God, right? Can you say that? The people. people of God. And then your sins are forgiven you. And the next thing that we do is we turn to the Word of God. And what's so amazing, we have prophets, we have priests, um, as far as just about 4,000 years ago that tells us about God, and we read that. And so the past becomes very, very present to all of us. And one of the amazing things that, that kind of takes my breath away, when it's time for the gospel, do you remember what we sing? Alleluia. Right? And what else? When we do the alleluia, what happens to the people? They all stand up. And they look at myself, they look at Father Paul, and saying that you are Jesus in our midst, and you're going to use the words of Jesus to enlighten us and teach us. So you're all on your, your feet, you're greeting Jesus and Father Paul and Father and myself, and it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and then part of what we do too, you are priests, right? When you're baptized, I will anoint you and say uh, that as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so are you. You are priest, prophet, and king. So when you're in here, you have to practice your priesthood. Can you say that? Priesthood. Why? Because we are the people of God, right? And so part of what you have to do, you've, you've got to respond, all right? They call it a dialogue. Anybody know what a dialogue is? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Right, two people are talking to each other, or maybe a whole bunch of people are talking to each other. And so when I go, the Lord be with you, remember what the response is? And with your spirit. All right, so that's part of a dialogue, and that's part of your priesthood. So you need to pay attention, and you need to participate in all of this. And one of my favorite things is that as people come up the altar, or down the aisle here, they have the bread and wine, and Jesus says that's the acceptable sacrifice. And one of the things that I remind everybody, this is the work of our hands, and we offer that to, uh, to God the Father. And so if it's the work of our hands, you're part of the bread, you're part of the wine, and God never keeps anything. He always gives it back, but he's going to bring part of the work of your hands, the bread and the wine, and make it the body and blood of his own son, okay? And so we gather up here. We're going to do the Eucharist. And again, the body and blood of Jesus is going to be offered within that, that, uh, on, on that altar. And so a lot of times, just pay attention to um, you know, that, that whole dialogue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All right? Okay, so that's important. It's all practicing of your, your priesthood. 
And then at some point, and I can't wait for this to happen to you, you will be receiving the body and blood of Jesus. Well, you can't. We're COVID. We don't do the blood anymore. I can't get used to that. But anyway, you're going to be receiving the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we'll tell you about that a little bit later, how, how to receive all of that. Uh, but that just uh, the most important thing there is that right now, um, Jesus is inviting you to his altar so that you guys can be one with the Lord here at the altar. You've got a place at God's table, and that's what's going to happen when you do your first Eucharist. So it's a beautiful and a wonderful moment. And at the very end of all of this, I will, they call it the dismissal. I will send you away because you've, been, you've eaten the body and blood of Christ. You are the body and blood of Christ to the world. And I will simply say, go in peace to love the Lord and to love your neighbor. So God fortifies you for a mission so that you can go out there, you can go back to your family, and you can be the Lord to all of them. So you want to bring peace. You want to bring love to your family and everybody that you meet for a week. That's exhausting. That takes a lot of energy. So the next Sunday, you come right back, and uh, you stay at the Lord's Supper, which is always an evening meal. And here we relax, and we turn to the Lord, and we get strengthened. Um, so all I just want you to do is when you come into the church, just look around you. Look at the furniture. Look at everything that is here. It is so very important, and it's not like simple furniture at your home. This is where the people of God gather you are the people of God, and now you're going to be welcome to the table of the Lord here on earth. Anybody have a question? Because uh, Joan is going to answer it. <laughs> yeah. No, not today. And it's going to be a while before you get the wine. Uh huh. Yeah, but because of COVID, we don't give it out. Spider-Man. Did you have a question? What? When's the... I didn't get that. When's the... The pool? I don't understand the question. Oh, the tour of the church. <laughs> you got it. Oh, you do it. And I want to thank the parents, but I feel betrayed. <gasps> thank you. All right, so while you're finding your seats, boys and girls, tell your mom or dad or brother.